Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on this video saying I subscribed. Let's get into it. According to latest reports, the Modi government's Make in India initiative is set to get one of its biggest defense orders, as the Navy have sent out the draft proposals to invite foreign manufacturers to share their technology and collaborate to produce six next-generation submarines in India. The Indian Navy also mandates all copyrights for the submarines, and after the delivery of the sixth submarine, India will have the full right to modify and produce unlimited number of submarines. The 40,000 crore rupees project aims to achieve at least 45% indigenization using Indian steel, and it will be equipped with indigenous submarine launched cruise systems, the RDO's heavy weight torpedoes, and the indigenous air independent propulsion system, that is currently being tested by the DRDO. According to media reports, the recent test of the indigenous long-range cruise system was not powered by the manic engine, and it maneuvered at a very low altitude of less than 5 meters at the speed of max 0.7. The missile covered over 600 kilometers in 42.23 minutes, and the test was aimed at checking the reliability of its boost phase and cruise phase, using waypoint navigation at a very low altitude. According to latest reports, India's first ocean surveillance and missile tracking vessel have received an encouraging response, and Hindustan shipyard is conducting a series of trials to prove the ship's resilience for any type of situation, and the ship will be handed over to the Ministry of Defense shortly. The $231 million ocean surveillance ship is built under the direct supervision of the Prime Minister's office and the National Security Advisor Rajit Doval and it will provide a big boost to Indian strategic programs including the BMD program, as it has a primary X-band and two secondary S-band scanderay and missile tracking antennas, and state-of-the-art long-range radar systems. The UK Defence Minister Stuart Andrew has said that the United Kingdom have strengthened defence ties with India after signing of a renewed Memorandum of Understanding. He also said that the two nations have agreed to redouble the efforts to identify mutual defense and security capability needs and collaborate on solutions at the bilateral defense and security equipment discussions in London last week. He also added that by collaborating and exploiting procurement opportunities together, both nations will be able to benefit from technological and manufacturing capabilities and support long-term cooperation between their defense and security industries. According to latest reports, China has successfully tested an amphibious drone vessel, which is capable of forming a combat group with other unmanned aerial vehicles. It has a maximum operational range of 1,200 km and a maximum speed of 50 knots while maintaining stealth, and can also be remotely controlled via satellites, and it can also remain dormant on an uninhabited island for up to 8 months. The Indian Army Chief General Bipin Rawat has said that the Army will deploy a fleet of hovercrafts at the run of Kutch, for guarding the international border with Pakistan. He also added that the training and operation of the hovercrafts would be done by the Army in coordination with the Indian Coast Guard, which have a good experience in operating the hovercrafts. The Indian Army and the Coast Guard were cleared to buy around 12 hovercrafts for surveillance in marshy and marine areas in the Gujarat border. According to latest reports, the International Monetary Fund's $8 billion bailout package to Pakistan could be delayed, as the IMF is pressing Pakistan to be transparent on the CPEC project, and the IMF wants a written guarantee from Pakistan that its assistance will not be used to repay its loans to China. According to latest reports, the Union Cabinet has approved the ongoing geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle continuation program Phase 4, consisting of five GSLV flights during the period 2021 to 2024. The Phase 4 of the program will enable the launch of two-ton class of satellites for geoimaging navigation and data communication, 
for supporting the Indian human spaceflight program and the next interplanetary mission to Mars. Oh, Mars, drop it.